Okay, welcome back. So let's see an example applying these basic ideas of continuous random variables and specifically our uniform distribution. Right, we saw the uniform distribution is usually just a simple square, simple rectangle, pretty easy to work with with some basic concepts of, of geometry. All right, so say we have the voltage of some part, a conductor, uniformly distributed from 123 volts to 125 volts. All right, and say we want to do something like find the probability that I randomly pick one of these one of these things and the voltage is greater than 124 and a half volts. Okay, so where do we start with continuous random variables? Remember we're working with density curves, okay? Continuous random variables are really more of a visual thing, okay? Our visual for discrete random variables is kind of that table, right? But with a continuous random variable, a good place to start is always to draw a picture, okay? So I know my uniform distribution is going to look like some sort of square or rectangle, right? And this one goes from 123 to 125, right? We are looking for the probability of x being greater than 1 being greater than 124. All right, so since this is a simple situation, the best thing to do, okay, I drew my picture. So here's 124.5. So this is the area that I'm looking for here. All right, now since this is pretty easy, the uniform is to work with, I really can just kind of visualize this, and I'm thinking, okay, this, from 123 to 125, this is 2. Right, from 124 and a half to 125, that's 0 0.5. All right, so so that's really a quarter of the area, or 0 0.25. All right, and intuitively that makes sense. You're just you're just using some pretty simple geometry there. All right, but we want to actually use these formulas. So what's the height of this rectangle? All right, well. Our density function says I can take 1 over b minus a, so the height is 0 0.5. All right, so 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 again is that 0.25. So that's so we arrive at our answer again there. Or I can use my uniform CDF. All right, now notice what we're doing here. All right, we started with greater than 124.5. Since my CDF is defined as less than or equal to, right, I can say, okay, flip this around, 1 minus that, do the math, and we should also get there 0.25. All right, so again, this is why we use the uniform, because it's easy to work with to demonstrate these ideas. There are more complicated distributions, and we'll see methods for using those, but the, the ideas are the same, right? We're going to use our, our PDF value or use our CDF when we have a nice, a nice neat formula for the CDF. All right, also, don't forget, got to add in this, this 1 minus there. We'll 1 minus our CDF value. All right, so we can also use technology to do this. All right, so let's see how we might do this in Minitab. So I'm over here in Minitab. If I go to Graph, Probability Distribution Plot, View Single, Right, by default, it's on the normal. We've we've used some of these. It's got discrete and continuous distributions on here. Right now, we're using the uniform. This uniform goes from 123 to 125. All right, so I'm going to click OK, and it gives me this distribution. It's a nice picture, much much prettier than the picture I drew a minute ago. All right, so to find a probability, we double click on this density curve, say shaded area. Remember, we wanted greater than 124.5. Here we go. And that should agree. That 0.25 there agrees with what we found earlier. Okay, so in mini tab, easy enough, even easier. All right, so the last thing we might want to do with the uniform is to find our mean and standard deviation. 
we have nice easy formulas to find the mean. Okay, the mean is just the midpoint here. Plug it in, I get my mean is 124. My standard deviation is, is 1 third point 0.3 repeat. All right, so hopefully you got a pretty good grasp on the ideas of continuous distributions here, demonstrating it with our uniform. We'll get into more complicated distributions in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.